Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Kara Spice, and today I have a very special guest. Um, her name is Tamara. I first saw Tamara on uh, Facebook with her comedy, and oh my gosh, this girl is funny. She's really, really funny, and I just had to check her out. She, um, you know, resonates with me um, as an educator. She's an educator. Um, she's a wife. She's a mom. Um, she's a businesswoman. I mean, everything that you can think of about Kara Spice is this woman. And I felt the connection. I'm like, I gotta get this girl on my channel, not because of the comedy, but because of the other content that she shared as well. So you guys know from time to time, I do talk about um, like health and anxiety, anxiety in particular, and now um, postpartum depression. And of course, um, my platform on YouTube is about health and fitness and overall wellness. And I thought, oh, what a great time to bring this woman on my channel. Not only are you going to learn about who she is, you're going to learn about her journey and you're going to learn about um, just the struggles and how um, she worked through um, those challenges. And I just felt like it is such a good time because it's now officially October. It's Mental Health Awareness Month. And October 10th, I think it's Mental Health Day. So at some point in time, you're going to see um, this video is going to be out. And it's just to bring awareness. And for me, particularly, um, I'm trying to push this in uh, the Black community as well, because it's not something that is openly discussed in the community. You know I'm authentic. You know I'm going to talk about it. You know I am unfiltered. So there it is. Hi, Tamara. Thank you so much for joining me after this mess. Oh my gosh, I owe you a big one. Oh, so tell people who you are and just let's get going and talk about this whole um, mental health, um, you know, our struggles as women and as moms and just how we're dealing with it. Very, very informal, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and subscribe to her channel. I don't see why you wouldn't want to. You're having a bad day, go to her channel. You'll be laughing. Um, give a thumbs up to both of us and leave us a comment so we know that you appreciate the content yes yes well thank you so much um for having um, me i'm super excited i'm very honored um to be a part of this this is something that i hold near and dear to my heart but for those of you who do not know me um hello to all of your lovely subscribers my name is tamara and uh, my channel is called the mom can do a plug and on my channel i help mothers embrace who they are outside of motherhood so um one of the things that i've discussed on my channel often is mental health one in particular um struggling with anxiety um i have mentioned um in some of my videos that i struggled with postpartum depression for actually several years so um it's something that i that i take seriously it's something that i actually would oh, Something is in my eye. Something that um, <laughs> I really want to talk about. And like you said, in the Black community, because when I was going through it, I felt like I was dreaming and couldn't find any help. Um, nobody really wanted to talk about it. Um, and I found that when I opened up about it, that's when people started coming to me saying, hey, I went through the same thing. And I'm like, why did right. you do anything? Um, but yes, um, I just, I'm glad to be on here and I'm ready to get started. So great so can you are you able to like tell us exactly when um you felt like you were like something wasn't right because for me um i sort of i can pinpoint that moment and it was something i talked about on my channel before i was literally standing in front of my kids i teach high school chemistry and just all of a sudden i couldn't keep up my head and I was holding my neck and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to pass out in front of my kids. And I probably literally had a panic attack at that moment. Mm -hmm. Luckily, things didn't get, you know, too out of hand. I was able to go to the doctor. And that was the first time I heard panic attack and anxiety. Of course, I brushed it off. I'm like, mm, I don't think so, you know, and I just brushed it off. But to pinpoint the moment, I think that is where it goes back to. Mm -hmm. Are you able to pinpoint when your whole struggle started? Yeah, so I have I have about three major pinpoints. The first one was when my first son, he's two old now, um, he was about three weeks old, and so he was still very new baby. And I actually he was about two weeks old. 
Um, I started feeling sick, really, really sick. I had a fever. I could not explain it. I didn't know what was going on. I was in com uncomfortable internally. I, everything was just off. And I went to the ER over the course of a week, in and out, like every other day I was in the ER. They couldn't, they misdiagnosed me so many times. And at the time, right. I didn't know that I was under the care, still under the care of my OB. I just thought that I don't had the baby. Now I need to go back to my primary care. But I didn't realize that you're under the care of your OB for at least six weeks after the baby right. is born. And so I um, eventually called her, and she was like, "Come see me immediately." And she put she admitted me into the hospital. And to this day, we don't know what it was, but there was a lot of guilt that came with that because I'm watching my husband, who's a new father, he's trying, he's working and he ended up taking off work and literally taking care of me and a brand new baby. Um, I was having to pump and dump and I remember there all this guilt set in that I was a bad mom and that I had done something wrong. So that was the first pinpoint. And then the second pinpoint for me was um, I was teaching middle school, teaching drama in middle school. And I came home and I was holding my son. And at this time, he was about three months old. And I just boohoo cried. I just cried. I was holding him, looking at him. And all I, was, all I could do was cry. And he's looking at me and it, like it was me and my husband and a friend was at the house. And they were like, what is wrong with her? And I'm just boohoo oh. crying. I'm holding him and I feel no, I feel no connection to him. Right. I feel like a bad mom. I'm like, everybody else can take care of him better than me. I can't take care of him. And right. then the third pinpoint for me was I had to come home from work. I had, I really only, when I finally went back to school after having my son, because I had him the first week of school, I had him the week after the first week of school. So I was out and I missed all this time with my students. And I came back. And when I came back, it was just so much. It was chaotic. And for those of you who don't know, I was a first-year teacher. I was in the master's program. So I was pursuing my master's. Um, I was a new mom and a new wife, all in the same, at the same right. time. So I came home from work one day. I'll never forget. I laid on the floor in my sunroom, and I was just staring off in space. And I remember just kind of looking. And my friend and my husband was just like, are you okay? And I couldn't talk. And then... I ended up talking to my mom on the phone about something and she was trying to explain something to me, but it just made me feel worse. I went right. to the room and started screaming, I want to die. I want to die. I don't want to be here. And I remember saying it and in, on the inside, I was like, why are you saying that? But I couldn't stop saying it. I literally could not stop saying it. And so my husband just grabbed me and started praying. And then just I just sat there. And that's right there is when I knew, okay, something is wrong. You need to go, like, you need to get help. And so right. those would be my three pin, my major pinpoints where I knew something was not right with me. But I didn't really, I had heard of postpartum, but I didn't really know it was a thing. Like, I heard people talking about it. But it's not, like I said, it's not something discussed in the African-American community. Right. So, I didn't know I was going through it until somebody else said, hey, this is what you're dealing with. Right. Well, thanks for sharing that. So, you know, I said the Black community simply because I'm really from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And even though we have African-American, we have African, it's the same thing back in the Caribbean. Um, mental health is not necessarily something that is really discussed openly. So that is one reason I started interjecting this on my channel. I felt like it was that important. Um, for me, when I mentioned my whole scenario in the classroom, that is where I first heard the A word, the anxiety word, and that was back in 2018. I'm pretty sure my symptoms um, started around 2015, 2016. Um, there were some major changes in my, in my life that probably would have led to me experiencing those um, symptoms and those symptoms manifesting at that time so much later, you know, like a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward, okay, I recently had a baby this May um, of 2020, and she was delivered at 29 weeks. Mm -hmm. Backstory to that, um, you know, I had a very, very difficult pregnancy with, you know, the whole, it's called HG, hyperemesis gravidarum. 
um, I shared, I talked about this on my channel as well, and just how it was really stressful for me, the emotional impact of that. Mm -hmm. Then having my pregnancy end abruptly was something else. That was another bit of trauma that I'm still trying to reconcile. You know, it's like I was pregnant now, and then in the next 10 minutes, I was told, okay, we're going to deliver this baby because of your um, preeclampsia. And then having a baby in NICU was another bit of struggle and trauma for me. So it was like three things all together. And even though I resolved, I, you know, I felt like I had a hold on my anxiety, fast forward, we're dealing with some sort of postpartum depression, according to my doctor and according to um, my counselor, because I'm also in, in, in a little bit of counseling just to help um, resolve the whole experience and to, you know, just, just kind of feel like, okay, um, there is something more to look forward to because I feel guilty and I beat myself up every day for not being able to continue with my pregnancy. I felt like I did something so wrong. You know, I preach health and fitness on my channel and I felt like the most unhealthy person that I wasn't able to carry on with my pregnancy. So there's a lot of unresolved guilt. Um, in that scenario. And so, um, you know, I felt like I couldn't really go to like friends to talk about it. Hence, I had to seek the help from outside sources. And you know what? It's better than nothing. It's going great. But at the same time, in between, um, you know, my family were concerned, my relationship, I'm married. I'm pretty sure there were things that my husband was dealing with that I wasn't aware of because, you know, guys sometimes carry things that they don't like to talk about. So I don't know about you, Tamara, but how did you feel your whole experience? Um, was there any impact on your relationships? Not necessarily your marriage only, but just your relationship with your coworkers and just friends. Um, if you want to talk about your husband, that's fine as well. So for my, I'll talk about my husband first because I think it impacted him the most. He, um, he feared for my life often. Yeah. Like, is she suicidal? Because I was. Is she going to be okay? You know, and I think he spent a lot of times trying to make sure I was okay. That at some point he neglected himself. Um, and so now I think he's playing catch up with self care. Um, but he. He de it definitely affected us in a lot of ways because I think he spent a lot of time tiptoeing around me trying to make sure he didn't say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing to start a flare up. Right. Um, my mom, same thing. My mom is a worrier anyway. So I, see, I know she spent a lot of time worrying about me and trying to make sure I'm okay. She spent a lot of time coming up here to, to check on me. Um, she even now, because with my second pregnancy, I didn't have postpartum, thank God. I kind of knew this time. And when I felt myself feeling some type of way, I set up a session with my counselor. And, you know, I just, I was a little bit more aware the second time around. Uh, but even now, I still struggle with anxiety, severe anxiety in my, uh, my mom spends a lot of time coming to check on me. Um, she, uh, is also like try to be careful with what she says, but we have an open communication now. Um, as far as my friendship is concerned, I really didn't ever really talk to anybody about it because when it comes to my circle of friends, I'm the one, the strong one, I'm the one that's always right. and laughing and loving and being there for everybody else. So when they see me down, right. it's like, I don't know what to do because we're not used to this. So I usually just kind of keep it to myself. And the ones who really, really know me, they're like, okay, what's wrong? What's going on? And I have a, a group of praying friends. So when they know something is off, they're like, all right, let's pray. Let's see what's going on, you know? So um, I would definitely say it affected the people closest to me. But I think a lot of them were mature enough to handle it. And I think sometimes yeah. we assume that they can't, so we don't. And I think we, we should make those decisions for people around us. I think we should give them the opportunity to give the support we need. And when we see that they can't be, then you learn from that and say, okay, I know I can't talk to her or I can't talk to him about it, but I, I see that she is strong in this moment. I, I see I can lean on her. I think okay. one of the biggest mistakes that we make is we assume that someone can't handle what we're dealing with. I know I was guilty of that as well. I mean, we're both teachers, we're both educators, okay? And I can tell you that I was, for a while there, I was probably the weak link 
mm-hmm. on my team. I was so sick with the pregnancy and so down. And it was a far cry from my first pregnancy. I mean, my first pregnancy, I was out there, girl. I was in a gym. I was just enjoying the glow. I was getting all the compliments. And then this second time around, I'm like, what hit me, you know? So we're so used to being, you know, the capacity of teachers and moms and um, just wives, you Mm. know, strong people. And it can feel like, okay, you really don't want to go to other people because you're used to being the strong one. But I think that is like the worst thing you can do, especially with something as serious as postpartum depression. I mean, we're lucky to have, to even have the support of our moms and our husbands and whoever else we have in our our circles, right? But there are a lot of women out there um, who just do not have the resources or the help. There's a lot of, what, single moms? Um, So, you know, for me, a question I get is, how do you deal with this? Where do you seek the help? I started with my OB. Um, I've known my OB for a while. I literally said to her, you're delivering my baby at 29 weeks. You know at the end of this, this this surgery, this dissection, I am going to be messed up. And she said, I know. I know how you are and I know. So I'm already going to tell you, you're going to counseling. You're going to get some help. You're going to talk it out. You're going to journal. You're going to do all that you need to do to be better and to get back to being your better self. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really grateful for having that kind of doctor to push me in that direction. Mm -hmm. I'm also very grateful to have a very, very strong mother. My mother is like my best friend. And I know it sounds so cliche, but she's literally my best friend because she's a good listener. She was also an educator for many, many years. She's retired now. And, um, you know, she's just very good at, she doesn't have the title of counselor, but she's very good at counseling and listening, giving you the best advice you can ask for. Um, and just in my immediate circle, you know, I have that close friendships that I need um, just to talk it out, laugh it out, cry it out. So I feel very blessed to have those things in my life. But there are women out there who do not even know where to start. So for you, um, what advice would you give there to, like, let's say moms who just do not know where to turn to? Mm-hmm. How would you, what would you tell them? I would tell them to um, do their research, um, find a reputable company or a counselor. Um, well, I know right now during the pandemic, it's kind of hard, but there are a yeah. lot of online counseling resources um, that are reputable, um, depending on your preference. Um, but I would say um, that. I think it's best. I think it's best. Sorry, my, my walked in here. Oh, tra- oh, guys, we have we all we have small kids. Like we both have three year olds, and I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that this little girl stays out there. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me, I um, I I would recommend that you number one do your research. Number two, I would it's it's not a question. Go to counseling. Because a, a certified person can sit down, hear what you have to say, and then also um, give you a constructive response, one that'll help you. Um, I recommend it because for me, I even now, even though I'm not dealing with uh, postpartum and I'm not necessarily dealing with depression anymore, um, there are things that she taught me years ago that I have that still stick with me. And sometimes it's good to just have somebody who's unbiased, who will hear what you have to say, and then be able to listen and then and give you practical things to help you. I would also right. recommend journaling. I would recommend anything that calms you. So if it's meditation, you need to sit down, listen to some music. If you need to self-talk, maybe sit in your car and record yourself talking just to get it all out. Um, and, and find someone that you trust that you can talk to and not worry yeah. about, um, you know, them judging you or, or, or saying something like, that's crazy, how, how could you do something like that? Um, so that would be my way to, ha- that's how you get started, I would say. Go ahead and pursue a counselor, pursue some type of help in that way. And a lot of people think that, um, a lot of people think that uh, that it's you know taboo to go to get counseling that you have to be right. crazy, but 
no, there are people who are mentally well and they still yeah. go to swim because they just need somewhere to dump, you know, that right. information. So I would definitely um, suggest that first things first, be counseling and do your research because you want to make sure you have somebody that you click with very well. Okay. I'm not going to keep it too long. I can tell that your baby is right there. Um, but did you feel like... Um, so I know we talked about the adults and the grown-ups, the husbands and the friends, but do you, how do you feel like your, your children um, deal with all of this? If, they, if you feel like there was any kind of impact. I know for me, when, my, when I was pregnant, I was so sick. Like I was throwing up about 10, 15 times a day. It was such a bad condition. My daughter would literally run, put on her little um, doctor play suit, her little shirt, Mm. and run over and mommy i want to make you feel better and you're so sad and this and that and the other and i can tell even though she's three she was affected by it so um again going on you know about carrying the guilt about not being there and being sick and being down all the time i'm also trying to resolve that because sometimes kids carry things that we don't see but have you experienced that i know i have but have you experienced that with your kids yeah so my son was almost three when I gave birth to my um my youngest son so my oldest son was um about he was he he had just turned three two weeks before my son was born but my second pregnancy was just like yours it was rough I threw up all the time I got admitted to the hospital because I was losing weight I was in, like in a negative game for my pregnancy um I was so sick I was miserable um, right. very big because I had gained a lot of weight because of the depression previous to and so I went into the pregnancy very big and it was just I was just out everything and so um, it was just real, a, a rough pregnancy for me and he too would say things like mommy I want you to feel better he would try to pray for me or you know lay on my lap and try to comfort me so I knew that he was seeing what was going on um, right. but I I try not to think of it in a negative way, like, oh, how did this affect him negatively? I think he just saw his mom going through, and he learned how to be a protector for me. That's good. That's and I would, good. I would suggest you think the same way when it comes to your daughter, because I think kids, we, they see things, but it's all in how we address it. You know, you think, yeah. oh, mommy's not feeling well, and that's okay. It's okay that yes. mom's not feeling well, and it's okay that you want to help mommy. You know, and yeah. so instead of taking this one and saying, oh, I'm not doing what I can for her, she's alive, she's well, she's, had, she's eating, she's not starving, you know, she's still breathing, you, you right. do good, <laughs> you know? So I think sometimes right. we get upset with ourselves because it's not perfect like how we thought it. We wanted them to get up at 8.30 and have a delicious, nutritious breakfast, and then we wanted them to sit down and cut their ABC. <laughs> That's not reality. Like at this point, well, we are teachers. That's what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I what we, do. we know we are like that. That's what we do. Yes, yes. <laughs> but it's not always realistic, you know. It's just not it's right. Not when you're sick and pregnant, son, step away. Sick <laughs> and pregnant, you know, and got a lot going yeah. on. So, yeah. Girl, I know, <laughs> I know. But um, I'm glad you mentioned that, though, because I'm such a structured person. And if it's the one thing that just being through this pandemic, being so sick and being so, you know, with the anxiety and depression and all of that, the one thing that I learned is just that I, I need to let go of certain things and let things be. I'm not holding on to stuff anymore. You know, I've become more relaxed about certain things because I have to. You know, I cannot stress about stuff that I don't have control over. And that was the one thing I really had to learn how to do. Um, just compart compartmentalizing my issues, my struggles, my worries for the day, put things on the back burner if they're not important, and just deal with what was urgent. And sometimes it's not always easy to do that. You know, when you're the kind of person who likes structure, and as you were just jokingly saying, um, you know, we we're going to have breakfast and do this and do our ABCs and all that. That's really how I was. You know, it's probably a teacher thing, but that's really how I was. But now that you say it, I can look at, I can look back and laugh. What was I thinking? You know, what was I thinking? You know, your children are fun. It's okay if they eat a pop tart and you're still in the bed. That's okay because you've got to make sure you're well. If you're not well, your child isn't going to be well. You know, they have to see you. And so it, it's okay. They're not going to be mad at you. 
and remember 10 years later, my mom made me get me pop tarts. That's not even, you know, all they're going to remember are the good times that mom, mom was, wasn't feeling well, but she made sure I had something to eat, you know? Right. I think we focus so much on what it looks like versus the reality. And one of the things that my counselor says all the time is, yes, one of the things that my counselor says all the time to me is, camera, state the facts. What are the facts? What are, what are we saying right now in the present? Is, which, is your child safe? Does he feel love? Is he in danger? Is he harmed? And I have to say, you know, you're right. He's fine. You know, and I, I and once I do that or stay, well, stay in the present because I'm a forward thinker. Okay, so what you can't control that. You don't know when that's going to happen. So what can we, what is something that you can deal with right now in this moment? And that has helped me tremendously when it comes to anxiety. I like that. And that is a good place to wrap up because people who do struggle with anxiety tend to be forward thinkers. We're like always with what if, you know, is this going to be in? And, and we do that a lot. So I'm really, really glad you mentioned that because that is classic. That is very classic of people who do struggle with anxiety. But, you know, I know I can see you're busy. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I don't know if you have any final thoughts, but that's it for me, guys. Well, thank you for having me, guys. Um, make sure you like and subscribe to Carol's Fitness channel. And if you want <laughs> to come over to my channel, um, you can come over and subscribe at the Mompreneur Plug. I will be happy to have you. And thank you once again. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, she's so funny. But if you're looking for some workouts and stuff to help deal with anxiety, come on over to my channel. But this woman yeah. is so funny. I'm so happy I ran across. I, met, I saw your video on Facebook. I needed that laugh. <laughs> yes. yes. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye.